Hello, my name is Peace Mwininzuki. I am 21 years old. I am a model and a student. I am the current Miss Tourism International Kenya. I am a student at uh, Riara University, currently taking a bachelor's degree in international relations and diplomacy. I'm in my third year. So I am a firstborn in a family of three. I have three sisters. I have two sisters, that is. And um, I have a loving mom and dad who have really supported me in my journey. Uh, we stay in Nairobi. I have been brought up in very different counties because my dad was, a, was working with the Ministry of Health, which at that time had a lot of transfers. So eventually I found myself moving around a lot, a lot. But uh, I started my school in Embu, uh, primary school and Machakos. Then I moved to high school in Matungulu Girls, my first and second year in high school. Then I did Buruburu Girls, my third and fourth year. Then I now moved to Riara University. Funny enough, I wasn't this confident back in the day. <laughs> Actually, I was a very, I was a victim of bullying in primary school. It really affected my self-esteem for a very long while. But uh, in my, around my second year in, in, in high school, I met a friend who told me, you know, you, you're really pretty and I think you'd win Miss Kenya. I was like, what? <laughs> but um, that that uh, that statement really took a tra a trajectory in my life, and I was I started getting intrigued. So around my around that time, I joined uh, the school pageant in Matungulu Girls, and I, I even though I didn't win Miss T Miss Matungulu, I got Miss Personality, which was a, a surprise for me because I didn't think I, I had it in me, but I got Miss Personality. Then from that point onwards, I developed a, you know, a liking for it, uh, for pageantry, and I never felt more confident than being in stage in a pair of heels. felt so amazing. So after high school, I went to Buruburu Girls, where I trained the ladies there for Miss Buruburu Girls. And after Miss Buruburu Girls, I joined high school, uh, university that is, and I got Miss Riara University. Uh, that was the beginning of this year. I got Miss Riara University. Then in the course of a year, I registered for Miss Tourism Kenya and uh, Embrace Africa, which is uh, an organization that just picked up Miss Tourism National Directory. I got Miss Tourism the end of July, so it's been a month. Miss Tourism is everything that I've ever wanted. Because uh, being uh, from the story of me traveling a lot in my childhood, involuntarily that is, I developed a liking for traveling and moving around. And Miss Tourism actually encaptures the entirety of traveling and the beautiful, beautiful Kenya. So I, I, I genuinely love it. Even though I've not done a lot, the itinerary is, is looking promising, yeah. Every outfit I have done, from Miss, Miss Riata to Miss Tourism, has been done by my mom. She does my outfits, she does my dresses, all my dresses, all my designs, all my outfits are designed and done by her. So handmade, yeah. She sews them herself, she designs them. We get the fabric, she does it herself. She even gives me the ideas sometimes when I'm blank. So she, she supports me in the outfit and the design um, area. Then financially, because pageantry is expensive, is 100% expensive. You need to invest in outfits, in makeup, in hair, in moving around. If the, the pageant is in Kisumu, you have to move to Kisumu. Yeah, so my parents have supported me financially, emotionally. Uh, whenever I feel low, I feel like, what if I don't get it? What if I don't make it? They stand up with me, they pray for me, they support me 100%, and I'd 
give the world to them honestly. So mysterism is a, a space that I want to capture with every might that I have. I want to use it completely for my advantage and for the country's advantage. So the first things first is I'll be going to Malaysia in November to represent my country in the international pageant. Where I'll be competing with uh, other misses from different countries and we are going to be picking Miss Tourism International who's just going to embody tourism globally. Yeah, so that is one of the places where I want to represent Kenya. Then apart from that, uh, we are planning to work closely with the Tourism Board of Kenya and the Ministry of Tourism, that, uh, that is a cabinet secretary and all, to look, at, to look into the tourism in Kenya and find out what are the gaps, what can we change, what can we improve, what can we work on to make sure that Kenya stands out in Africa and the world as a tourism destination. Yeah. So basically, I'm looking at a lot of things. I've been traveling for the last month. I've gone to, to a few counties. And I want us to, to capitalize on culture, on people, on foods. As much as wildlife is one of our biggest tourism um, source, we have so much that we can produce to the, to, the, to the rest of the world. First of all, it is not as calm and collected as people think. You're, you're usually trembling beyond words. But one thing that pushes me is a passion. I love modeling. I don't know. It, it's just something that I didn't know I had in me until later on in my life. But I'm, I feel so calm and collected when I'm on stage. As much as uh, it's scary and you're, you're wondering if you'll get the crown, if you'll win and all that, at the end of the day, the passion really pushes me to stand strong and to give it my best. Yeah, so passion for me. Then also support from friends and family. Whenever you're having them in the crowd screaming your name and shouting for you, and you just encouraged that there are people who believe in you and they are excited to see you there and all that. Then also having fun, not really thinking about it that much, just enjoying every moment and being like, okay, this is my time if I win the crown or not, as long as I had fun. As much as, uh, because this is only a year, term a rain for one year there's life after that and there are people that the places I've gone to and they're, they're small uh, small girls and my sisters my 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 cousins people from church from school from everywhere looking up to me and they're like wow that girl is really making it in life so that is one of the, my biggest responsibilities I want to to make an impact in the lives of young people that they may see that it's not out of reach. When I was young, I was like, Miss Kenya is like over there. <laughs> and it's reachable if you believe in yourself and if you know what you want and if you're looking up to it, there's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't conquer. So my biggest responsibility to this generation is to set the best example. Apart from uh, my career, I do event planning and event decoration. So I do weddings, birthdays, you know, baby showers, bridal showers and whatnot. Yeah, then um, I'm a Christian. I love God, I, I'm born again. I am the typical <laughs> church girl by the book, yeah. So I'm into Christianity and my faith has really been a stronghold in most of the things that I do. So yeah, Christianity is a really big part of me. Yeah, so one of my biggest uh, projects for this year is a uh, hashtag My Talent Saved Me initiative, where it's under a program called Mifikie, and we are, we are starting on a, on a small scale in Mukuru Kwanjenga. So this is basically a, we don't want handouts, kind of an initiative. The world is getting tired of giving, giving, giving. 
everyone wants to be given everyone wants to be helped everyone wants to be educated so what are you giving to the world so that they can give back to you so we are working hand in hand with this small uh, with these children in Mukuru Kwanjenga who are talented who can sing who can dance who can model we're going to train them and they're going to have a concert where they're going to sell themselves sell themselves to the public we're going to work with companies who are ready to sponsor and donate to such events then uh, we are going to pay for their school fees with that we are going to elevate their their moms and their their families because most of them are single parents and uh, they they're working on pay, pay, payments that is from hand to mouth basically so we're going to work with these kids they're going to perform on stage they're going to do their thing and the money collected from such concerts will be given to them so my my passion genuinely is around uh, young kids from 0 to 18 these are people who are still vulnerable and they're finding their way in, in life and it's a really critical age to build your future so if you don't uh, work on what you want around that age it becomes a little bit hectic not impossible but a little bit hectic to do it when you're a bit grown and when you look at these kids they have no option they're not in a, in a in a country where they can work when they are under 18 so it it put puts pressure on them and what not so i feel like impacting them at that age makes a really big difference for their entire life so i i i love small kids i love it's they're just magical they're just you know honest and fragile and pure and they 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 make the best templates to work on the best uh, canvas to paint on because when you do it when they're young it makes a really big impact in the future so basically that is what we are targeting and just in line with tourism It's a it's a place where we can you know we can get uh, tourists to come and watch such such events and when we we scale up it can be something we can do countrywide we can build schools we can change lives we can do hospitals with this money because we, I don't want them to to grow up with the mentality of we will be given we will be given we will be given it will be a situation where we can learn to start creating wealth for themselves at a young age especially with what they they know and they learn because it's a gift that comes from within before they can get into their career paths after they are taught something from the outside they can use what they have from the within to create a, a, a good position for themselves so we're going to be taking a short commercial break but we'll be right back Hello everyone. Welcome back from the break. My name is Peace Mweni, current Miss Tourism Kenya 2024. Uh, you can follow me on my social media handles that is Instagram at Peace Mweni and at TikTok at Peace Mweni and YouTube at Peace Mweni. So basically, uh the my talent saved me initiative initially started as a small scale plan. I had gone to visit a school in Mukuru Kwanjenga called the Nifikie Christian School where it's a it's a product of the the founder the director is a product of Mukuru Kwanjenga so she built the school for students who are the overflow in public schools because right now schools are uh, overflowing yeah. so uh, the school there uh, is a uh, is a program for the Mukuru Kwanjenga students and she doesn't necessarily really ask for school fees because their parents most of the parents there are single parents or there are no parents at all they're just orphans so uh, it becomes hard to maneuver through school work paying teachers getting them food and what not but they they've been getting support here and there once in a while So we we looked at how can we 
get a permanent solution for this. So we came up with My Talent Saved Me initiative, where we're going to train the kids in that school, songs, dances, especially cultural ones, and modeling and pageantry and whatnot, so that they, we can have a concert, maybe once per year, to raise money for their schoolwork. And for continuity, we wanted to do like 60% education and 40% an initiative called Nifikie for the parents where we could do something like briquettes, making briquettes and we could source market for them. So they just make and we could source market for them. The money they get, they get 60% for their house, for their food and whatnot and 40% to do a savings account where they can now build into the future. So basically right now we've had conversations with the school, we've finalized on uh, uh, dates for starting on, you know, the practices and rehearsals and whatnot. We have also gotten uh, a few sponsors around and we are looking at now a venue, we are looking at, you know, marketing and whatnot. So probably by next year, uh, during the second term, it would be ready for the show and we could market it nicely so that people can come join and just um, buy tickets, come watch the show. Because we are looking at it in a, in a way where they are not receiving handouts. They are not just being given money or bursaries for their school. They are getting on stage, they are creating this wealth for themselves and they are just going to pay their school fees using their talent, using their passions and using their, their, their gifts. So the, 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 coming, the coming months, they're just going to be doing practice. They're going to be sourcing uh, people to do maybe their outfits for the event, sponsors to do the, the, you know, the stage, the lighting, the sound system. Yeah, so that is the, the process we are in right now. Well, basically, we were looking at uh, around second term next year. So between May and July, uh, around those three months, where we are going to pick a good date, where we are going to have the event, and it's going to be a yearly thing so that we can, we can ensure continuity. Yeah. So all this is under the umbrella of my company, Crown Posterity, which is a pageant and modeling, entrepreneurship, and talent innovation company that I launched uh, in the beginning of this year. This is a company that I have to just uh, nurture this uh, talents from a young age. You find ourselves, for example, I'll be going to Malaysia to compete with girls from Philippines, from Malaysia, from these countries, and they start their pageant training at five years, five years old. And you know, that's not a pretty leveled playing field where you have someone who has that much of an advantage. So from that point is where I realized we are sending out half-baked uh, individuals to compete with people who have way more advantage, years of training. So that's how I launched the Crown Posterity uh, company, which is basically going to be under that. Well, I don't think this is the last crown I'd want to participate in. I'd, I've really, really, really wanted to work on the Miss Universe stage. So uh, in, a, in a year or two, I'd probably be on that stage competing for Miss Universe Kenya. But apart from that, I want to really uh, work on my company, Crown Posterity. And I want to work hand in hand with the Ministry of Education to develop like a curriculum where it could also be taught in school. The same way it's math and music and whatnot, we can have these talents trained in school thoroughly because not everyone is promised a career job. Not everyone is promised a career job. The people who are making fortunes from music, from acting, from modeling, so we can give everyone a, a leveled playing field where they can decide on which path to take with their life. So I want to capitalize on my, on my company, that's Crown Posterity, and also uh, other crowns, other pageantry crowns, yes. So my advice to people who want to take this career is be confident, believe in yourself. You might fall once or twice, thrice, 
seven times, it doesn't matter. But uh, if you're consistent and you're deliberate about what you want, the universe is going to give it to you. I can tell you for a fact that in Miss Rara, I did it the first time, I didn't get it. The second time I did in Miss Matungulu, I did it two times, I didn't get it. I got Miss Pat Personality, but I didn't get the Miss Matungulu girls. It takes uh, consistency, it takes uh, believing in yourself and being confident to get it. There's, there's a certain lady from USA, Miss USA, I think 2019. She did it seven times seven times she was in the miss usa budget for seven years failing consistently every year but she still went back and eventually she got it so there's a consistent consistency part and also believing in yourself and being confident and yeah that's all it takes honestly i was bullied in school because uh people apparently thought i wasn't pretty so that there was a group of uh, students in my class who wrote a list of the top 10 most beautiful girls, top 10 most ugliest girls, and I'd, I'd featured in the ugly list. So it affected my self-esteem for a while. I thought I wasn't pretty, I wasn't beautiful, I didn't want to see myself in public, and uh, Eventually, when uh, someone called me out as beautiful, is when I realized, oh, so I'm pretty. So I'm, so I'd, I'd not want people to, to depend on uh, human uh, opinions. But what I can say about bullying, you are your own self. Everyone is pretty in their own self. Everyone is beautiful, everyone is powerful in their own self. And you are the one who dis defines yourself honestly. If you don't define yourself, the world will and they will do it brutally. They will tell you everything that you don't want to hear and they'll make you believe it. They made me believe it for, for that matter. So you define yourself as early as now, as young as you are, define yourself, define your, your pretty, define your beauty, define your confidence, define everything about you and do not let anyone say anything else. You are the one who has the final say. So opinions don't matter. At the end of the day, you are the one that counts. Well, uh, it takes a lot of practice. And honestly, I believe people are gifted differently. So uh, for me, public speaking had come out from the, from the confidence that I built after I realized that I am my own self. But um, apart from that, taking a career in international relations and diplomacy is also one of the ways that has boosted my public speaking abilities. Yes, and actually in pageantry, there's also during the boot camps, you're also trained on public speaking, how to answer questions, how to present yourself, how to, to uh, involve, uh, you know, how to, to work yourself over a stage and how to answer questions, how to be in front of guests, yeah. So it's different places, different experiences that has taught me how to express myself. Yeah, my career goal was to do, uh, to work in, a, in an embassy, to be an ambassador of Kenya to a certain country, I love my country so much. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world, and I'm, I'm so proud to be a Kenyan. So I'd like to be an ambassador to another country, to present my country in another country, to advocate for Kenyans in other countries. So yeah, I'd want to use my, my degree in that line, yes. Mm -hmm.